Hello, and welcome to Doves for Peace. I'm Keith Beasley, and I'd like to welcome you tonight, or this morning, or whatever time it happens to be where you're listening, from a rather wild and windy North Wales in the UK. As we're still getting into this new year, in this programme, I'd like to explore the idea of the year ahead and what can we possibly know about it? Can we predict it? Can we control it? What can we really know about the future, if anything? So these are the, the themes I would like to explore tonight. I'll probably only talk for about half an hour, but most of you who are listening, if you have any questions, comments on what I've been saying, please post them to the chat. And when I finish my spiel, Hopefully I'll have time to respond to your comments and perhaps uh, engage in some more personal discussions. Because this is all a bit new and different for me, I'm very used to running workshops and to teaching groups. And so I, I'm used to having a more immediate feedback, people to, to look, at, look at and to exchange with both visually and in words. So I find this all a bit strange, actually, speaking to a camera. I, I'm a Leo and a bit of a performer. And as you'll gather when I start singing, I, I do like to sing, I like to perform, I like to be on stage. And I find that teaching, running workshops, it sort of goes with that very naturally. But the idea of just sitting or standing somewhere and talking at people, well, it doesn't work for me, to be honest. So I'd like this to be uh, interactive, at least in the second part. So do please post your comments and questions as we go through this evening. But let's begin with just a few minutes of silent peace, a bit of stillness to perhaps calm down after the rush of the last few minutes or hours. So I invite you to Take a deep breath in, and as you breathe in, imagine that you're breathing in a sense of peace, a sense of calm, a sense of a divine love that is within and around all of us. And as you breathe out, breathe out all of the thoughts, all of the feelings. Thank you. This is where I guess I have to be present. I have to imagine that there are some, maybe quite a few of you listening. And this is where perhaps I have to trust my inner knowing and to just be present with you and, and to hope that you are able to hear me, see me and to be with me as we share this period together. OK, so we're talking about the new year. What does it bring? What might it bring? And I guess the first thing I'd like to talk about in that context is predictions. What, if anything, can we, any of us as human beings, accurately or reliably predict? Reliably predict? And uh, I say this as an electronics engineer. For many years I worked at the forefront of technology involved in the design of silicon chips for electronic systems, for example, telephone exchanges. And one of the things I was asked to do, expected to do, required to do, was to either predict how long a given bit of electronics would last, or to make sure it was designed and built so it would last a long time. 20 years, in some cases, for a piece of equipment for a British Telecom's new then digital exchanges. And what I came to realise was that 
yes, we can understand the technology, we can understand what's happening in our bit of electronics, what the electrons are doing, if you like, and we can make sure there are quality procedures in place. But when it boiled down to it, how long something would last would very much depend on, well, the attitude of the people making it, how busy or understanding or aware the people using it were, and in some cases, well, act of God. One of the things that electronics really does not like is, is lightning and static electricity and all those sorts of things. So in the hard world of electronics, it dawned on me that prediction is a, is a dodgy game. To predict the future is something we do at our peril, and anyone who professes to, to know what the future may bring, well, I think they're kidding themselves, aren't they? What do you feel? Are we being realistic, or are we trying to play God by trying to predict things all the time? I'll let you reflect on that for a few minutes while I take a quick slurp. So that was one perspective I had on predictions. And then when I left the electronics industry, I became a Reiki master teacher. And I started running all sorts of self-development workshops. And I started using various forms of divination, particularly angel cards. And uh, one of the sets I particularly like is the Doreen Virtue Ascended Masters and her angel cards. And I started working with these with myself and with my clients. And something became quite clear to me quite soon that although these cards can give us a, an insight into what might be happening in our life at a, at a given time and perhaps give us new perspectives, help us to see what's really going on. The idea that the, a divination was a sign of a future just really didn't seem to wash. And so it dawned on me that when we get these signs, these omens, when things happen which we see as foretellers of good or bad futures, things to come, usually what they're doing, I find, is that they're helping us to become more aware of the present moment. They're helping us to recognise what's going on in our life or what's going on in the people around us. Help us to become more in tune, more in touch, more aware, more connected in our lives. So that's been my perspective. And what I'd like to do now is, whether or not this this works or helps or illustrates my point, I, I will leave to divine providence here. I'm going to take the angel cards and I'm going to spend a few minutes tuning into those of you who are listening and watching Dust and Peace. And I'm going to ask for guidance for the year ahead. Which angels can we most look to for help, which angels are most relevant for you, the listener, and myself, and those who are, who are seeking to bring more peace into our lives and into the world around. How can we do that? What do we need to help us? So let us all sort of hold that question in our mind for a few moments. What does the future hold in the coming year? How can we best face it? What do we need to get us through the next 12 months? I do love these angel cards. The angel of listening. 
And that seems paradoxical that me as a broadcaster, as someone who's here to speak, has been asked to listen. But I drew this card for all of us. And I think that's what we need to do this coming year, is rather than pronounce our idea of what's right or wrong, rather than to tell other people this, that or the other, is that to best get through the year ahead, we need to listen. Listen with our hearts, listen with our souls. Or is that not at the heart of of bringing peace to our own world and to those with whom we share it. Listen. Listen. I'm glad you like it. Thank you. And that's listening not just to other people, but listening to our own inner guidance. Instead of thinking we know what's coming, instead of thinking we know what's right for ourselves and others, to take a step back and, and listen to our that still small voice within. And perhaps to take one day at a time. One day at a time. Cue first song. As you watch me, or well, those of you who know me a bit more will know that I will take any excuse or opportunity to burst into song. <clears throat> One day at a time. I'm only human. I'm just a man. Help me believe in what I could be and all that I am. Show me the stairway I have to climb. Lord, for my sake, teach me to take one day at a time. One day at a time, sweet Jesus, that's all I'm asking from you. Just give me the strength to do every day what I have to do. Yesterday's gone, sweet Jesus, and tomorrow may never be mine. Lord, help me today, show me the way, one day at a time. Do you remember when you walked among men? Well, Jesus, you know, if you're looking below, it's worse now than then. Cheating and stealing, violence and crime, so for my sake, teach me to take one day at a time. One day at a time. Sweet Jesus, that's all I'm asking of you. Just give me the strength to do every day what I have to do. Yesterday's gone, sweet Jesus, and tomorrow may never be mine. Lord, help me today, show me the way. One day at a time, Lord, help me today, show me the way, one day at a time. Thank you, I'm glad you like that. As you can see, I, I enjoy singing. And to me, it's a wonderful way of connecting. As we sing, so we allow ourselves to truly connect to our own inner light, to our own essence. And we allow God's love to flow in and through us. So from a Christian perspective, one day at a time, all sorts of other similar prayers and hymns. But the same idea is, is common throughout different faiths and different philosophies. The idea one day at a time 
to be present, to live in the moment, to be mindful, to be detached. The Buddhist idea of not getting attached to the future, not getting attached to the past, not trying to control our life ahead. To take one day at a time, to detach from preconceived ideas, to detach from beliefs, dare I say it, but to be present, to take not just one day at a time, but one moment at a time, to live in a present moment. I teach Reiki healing and in Reiki we have what we call the, the, the precepts or the principles of Reiki and they all begin just for today. Just for today I will not worry. Just for today I will not anger. Just for today. To say I'm never going to worry again is totally unrealistic isn't it? But if we say, just for today, I will not worry, and if moment by moment we are mindful of when our mind starts to go into an anxiety mode, if we start worrying what might happen or what's gone by, it's at those times then we can catch ourselves. We can take a deep breath. We can sing a song or a hymn to ourselves. We can chant. We can pray to bring us back into our core, into our centre. And by doing that, then we will bring about the future that's right for us, the future we need. And I think that's, that idea is becoming more prevalent these days. Last year I completed my PhD at Bangor University here in Wales. And my theme was transcending thought, high levels of consciousness, if you like. How sometimes we are, we are present, we are totally at peace with ourselves, with the world, without the conscious mind getting in the way. And as I was researching that, exploring that idea, I came across many others who, like myself, have this perception that consciousness, how we are, how we think, how we evolve, how we grow, how we develop as individuals and collectively, is a, a co-creative experience. And it's that wonderful old saying, God helps those who help themselves. So if we want 2015 to be a good, successful, fulfilling and rewarding year, then we have to do our bit, don't we? And that means doing our best to be present, to do our, our best to take each moment as it comes, to be aware of our own attitudes and behaviour. Yes, just for today I am not going to worry. Uh, now, just for today, I will not worry. Not going to is the future, isn't it? Just for today, I will not worry. Now, this isn't saying that we, we don't worry, because the reality is we do. What the Reiki precepts are about is be, to be aware of how we're feeling, to be aware of what's going on in our, in our mind, in our, our bodies, knowing. So rather than withholding our feelings, just for today I will not worry, just for today I will not anger, taking one day at a time is about being aware of them and then if we do feel ourselves getting worried, if we do feel ourselves getting angry, we take a step back and we face it, we ask ourselves, hang on, what am I getting worried about? And at that point, we engage with our particular reflective practice, with our prayer, with our meditation, with our self-healing, with our Reiki, Yoga, Tai Chi, chanting, whatever it is that works for us. This is all part of being present, being mindful and the way we can co-create our own future. 
I do apologise for, for that. My internet went down. Um, I don't know how much you missed. I'll um, endeavour to keep going. Well, I'm back with you now and again I think this just illustrates that we cannot predict or control anything. I've done what I could to ensure I had a good connection and it just went. Life is uncertain, isn't it? And that's about the only thing we can be sure of. And that cues another song. This is from the, the great Bob Dylan. <clears throat> How many roads must a man walk down before you can call him a man? Yes, and how many seas must a white dove sail before she sleeps in the sand? Yes, and how many times must the cannonballs fly before they're forever banned? The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the wind. How many times must a man look up before he can see the sky? Yes, and how many years must one man have before he can hear people cry? Yes, and how many deaths will it take till he knows that too many people have died? The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the wind. How many years can a mountain exist before it's washed to the sea? Yes, and how many years some can people exist before they're allowed to be free? Yes, and how many times can a man turn his head, pretending he just doesn't see? The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the wind. The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the wind. Why do we insist on answers to all our questions? Hmm? I think it's just a rational mind gone to extremes, isn't it? And that's certainly the perspective of the people I was researching in my PhD. That all this, this head stuff, all this intellectual emphasis or this rational thought it's just been a phase we've been going through and and now those of us such as those listening today and those of us in the many organizations of which i'm part or know of the transcendence movement i call them we know that real knowing that real truth is about being present and it, it's what we can feel within us but the rational mind can never really know everything can it the answer is blowing in the wind and we can't pin the wind down. Can't pin down vague ideas such as, as truth or the future. <laughs> they will take their time and happen as or when they need to. Okay let's have another few minutes uh, silent reflection and uh, if any of you have any questions, comments on the theme of predictions for future, omens, and that sort of topic, then please put them into the chat window and I'll do what I can to respond. But let us just reflect on this idea of the answer is blowing in the wind, that beliefs predictions, ideas of the future, are just human concepts 
they're not reality. Reality is the, the feeling that we have when we feel connected to each other, to our true essence, to God, to the oneness of life, the Tao, whatever you want to call it. Thank you, Sean. That's an interesting question. So Sean asks, what are my thoughts on the significance of the number 8 for 2015? That's certainly numerology, yeah. I hadn't thought of it, to be honest. I hadn't associated 8 with it, but you're right. Um, I had to smile when I first saw your question, um, because number 8 is particularly relevant to a book I'm reading at the moment. And I don't know how many of you are familiar with the Terry Pratchett Discworld series. Well, one of the, these Terry Pratchett books uh, called Masquerade uh, is about, well, opera. Uh, and it's, it's sort of um, Terry Pratchett's version of Phantom of the Opera. And in this book, there is a ghost in the, in the theatre. And the ghost occupies, guess what, box number eight. And nobody else is allowed to go anywhere near it. Um, that doesn't really answer the question, but... Hmm. Number eight for 2015. I don't know is the answer, Sean. I'll, I'll have to reflect on that one. And if I come up with anything, or anything occurs to me, I will certainly share that next time. Ah, right, okay. So yes, as you say, um, 2015, 2 plus 1 plus 5 is 8, uh, and that is a, a significant number. And Sean is suggesting that it reflects a major shift. Absolutely. Um, certainly from the work I did in my thesis, the, the Transcendence Movement, the people that I've worked with and researched, and many others who I've come across in like-minded organisations online within the UK and in many forums. Our perspective is certainly that the world is going through a major shift, that we are doing no less than, than changing how we're thinking. A significant number of people are recognising that the conscious mind has had its day and, and that too much emphasis on rational thought is actually at the cause of, of many, if not all, of the, the current world's problems. And if 2015 is, is seen as being significant in this process, then I'm certainly not going to disagree with that. Although, again, I, I would caution us on being too specific and pinning too much to it. Uh, those of you who can think back a few years, there was all this talk about 2012 and whether that was significant, as in the Mayan prophecies, that that would be the end of something significant and the beginning of something else in terms of, of human evolution and the way we live as human beings. And again, similar comments were made. You know, it, is this the year to end all years? So I would say that any significance of 8 to 2015 is probably comparable to the significance that the Mayans and others put on 2012. And I'm also reminded, um, I've been watching a documentary about Bob Dylan, hence blowing in the wind. And here's uh, another thing he wrote about. Or the title of one of his albums, see me while I just look at my notes, um, is Times They Are a Changing. So back in 1962-63, Bob Dylan wrote Times They Are a Changing. And the 1960s was seen as 
a time when everything was being turned upside down. So my own perspective is that times human, or the way we as humans um, relate to the world, how we think, our, in, our idea as to what's important about being human, we first started to question that, and our rational emphasis on it, in the 1960s. Hence all the CND, Campaign for Nuclear Disarmament, and all those sorts of things in those days. And what we're seeing now, 2012, 2015, is a continuation of the same process. If you think about it, we're talking about a total change in how we think. A total change in, in what we mean by knowing, by understanding, by being human. We can't truly expect that to happen in one year or even two or three, can we? So I think the shift that we're talking about is going to take quite a few decades and a few generations. And I think if we try to quantify that, we're asking for trouble. It's the same as when I was asked to predict the reliability of electronic equipment. You can come up with some indicators. You can come up with some, some clues, some, some factors. And certainly from my research, there are plenty of indicators that more and more of us individual human beings, organisations such as Dove